Good morning, people in Facebook land and on YouTube. I'm Reverend Peter Pandagore, and I have the great honor today to be in Rangeley, Maine, where I spent many years skiing at Saddleback, but I'm not there today. I'm inside the Congregational Church of the United Church of Christ. People, could you say hello? Hello. This is the most fun church um, that I've been in a long time, and I say fun because we've been laughing the entire time, and I didn't start it, <laughs> which in itself is kind of a a fun thing, I think. Good morning, Ray. So there's a whole bunch of people that normally watch. I'm trying to set this up on the dais here in a very balanced situation. Popping open my iPad. Hi, Eve. All right, I'm hitting my teleprompter. He said, I learned to use teleprompter on TV. This is a great clergy tool or anyone giving a speech. Watch this. Push the button, and there it is. Large letters, and it scrolls. <laughs> so this sermon today is titled, Jesus was a code switcher. I'll repeat it, because that's a new word for some of you. Jesus was a code switcher. So I was sitting at a sushi bar when I recognized an old friend behind the sushi bar, and he was an immigrant. His dad was an immigrant from Japan. He was the chef making my sushi. And I said to him, Konnichiwa, my friend. And he said to me, Konnichiwa, my friend. So do you code switch? In linguistics, okay, a little bit of linguistics here, code switching or language alternation occurs when a speaker alternates between two or more languages or language varieties in the context of a single conversation. Code switching is the use of one or more linguistic varieties in a manner consistent with syntax and phenomenology. That's more than you need to know. Who here speaks two languages? A little bit, even. Did you ever use two languages at the same time? Yes. Mix them together? Uh, me, for me, it's American Sign Language. Um, but... Uh, Maybe if you haven't code switched yourself, you've heard code switching in your travels, maybe in Boston or New York or when you're abroad. Code switching, I think, is, is ancient. I believe that code switching is where languages mix. When languages mix, new ideas come along for the ride. Code switching mixes cultures together. Code switching is an intersection an edge, like a continental beach and the ocean. Edges are lively places. Meadows set next to woodlands filled both with insect life, avian, mammalian, mycelium, reptilian, and I knew I was going to have a hard time with this, arachnid, <laughs> grasses, trees, and undergrowth. Edges are lively places. Code switching exists on the edge of cultures and peoples. Spanglish is an American edge. Have you code switched? Jesus code switched. Yeshua spoke Aramaic. Yeshua spoke angelic. Angelic is the ineffable language of heaven that exists in this world only as metaphor. It's the only language on earth that is an entirely made of metaphor. It is the language that in heaven literally has no tongue to speak it. Jesus was a code switcher. He spoke Aramaic and angelic. His disciples talked about the majestic stonework of the temple and the memorial decorations on the walls. Jesus heard and said, none of these things last. Right here, he code switches, saying the temple will crumble in history, and so will you. Teacher, they ask, when will all this happen? What sign shall we see? 
Show us signs. Who here looks for signs? Some people look for feathers, I know, dimes, chickadees. Some signs are specific, some are in general. Show me a sign, God. Sometimes that happens too. What are they? What are they? What are signs for? What are signs for? People. Direction. For what? Direction. What are signs for? Weather. Weather, yes. <laughs> Anyone else? Direction, weather? Warnings. Warnings. Reassurance. Reassurance. Comfort. Directions. Directions. What's the difference between a sign and a symbol? A sign points to one thing. A stop sign means one thing. Stop. A symbol points to many things. All at once. The symbol of the cross. Jesus spoke sign and symbol all the time every time he spoke heavenly signs give us knowledge assurance direction understanding hope as you say as you know yeshua replied first first don't be misled for many will come in my name and the name of christ light saying i am the light and and here's the critical part and the end is near. Hellfire brimstone. Don't believe them, he says. He code switched, and now he's telling his disciples and us through the story not to believe those who say they speak for Jesus when they say, in my interpretation, Armageddon is coming and the rapture will occur. I know for a fact that the moment you die, you encounter God. I know for a fact the moment you die, you go home. That's the rapture. Jesus is here, never left. Not coming again because he never left. The Holy Spirit is present here now. You felt it in our little prayer. I know you did because I felt it too. The moment you die, you're raptured. So fear not. The soul with light is immediately uplifted by the light because the light knows the light. The light loves the light. Fear not. All is love. Don't believe the religious false teachings of Armageddon. The science, on the other hand, warns of us of, us, of catastrophic climate change. Listen to that. The United States Navy is listening to that. We should listen to that. They're moving their bases, or planning to. Warning signs of climate change, asteroids, earthquakes, pandemics, and supervolcanoes. Human beings are temporary on the Earth. We haven't been here that long. Those sorts of things have been going on for millions and billions of years on this planet. We're just the latest creature to have to endure. Now, history warns us of selfish human nature with our nuclear weapons capacity and genocidal annihilation orientation. Nation against nation insurrection. But don't panic, Jesus says, which you might be surprised to learn is also on the cover of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. <laughs> Do you know that book? <laughs> right? Okay, Zepha Vita Box. <laughs> don't panic is always good advice pretty much anywhere, every time. Especially, especially when everything's <laughs> crashing down around you. The Christians were persecuted in the early days. Lions, Romans, etc. They were dragged into courts. Paul. And into synagogues. And they were thrown in prison. And similar things still occur in parts of the world, but they have not occurred here in the United States or Canada 
or the West or many other places on earth in a long, long time. They do occur in other places. We know that for a fact. But not here. Then Jesus code switches again, big time. He, yes, he foretells the disciples their fates. Bad times are going to come to you. You're going to be dragged before courts and synagogues and, and you're going to have to explain yourself. Accept it as your fate and take it as an opportunity to spread the truth and the light. It's the same advice for us. Don't worry about what you're going to say, even though I'm reading from a text script. Don't worry. And then he says, if you die, and you will, you don't really die. You journey on. Not a hair of your head will perish. And the more you spread the light, he says, the more light lives inside you. And that's the secret. The more you give it away, the more capacity you have to get more. Overflowing. Nothing of you or me or anyone that matters will perish. So stand firm, he says, and you will save your souls. End quote. Jesus says, save your souls yourself. Think about that. How? Endurance in the light. How? Giving it away. Amen. Peace and love. See you soon.